Today I'm making another homemade power station. But the first thing I gotta do is make a battery. And I thought I would film that, even though I know I have other videos where I show you how to make a battery. But I thought, why not just do one more? So what we've got here is um, I've been top balancing the batteries, so they're all in parallel. All the positives are here, all the negatives are here. And I've been charging it up to 3.6. And as you can see, it's pretty much done charging. These have been sitting in parallel for a couple of days, so they're pretty much top balanced. Top balancing is always the first step when you build a battery. So now I'm gonna turn this off, remove the clips, and I'm gonna take off these bus bars, and I'm gonna alternate them. Because right now they're in series, and I need to make them in parallel for my battery. And this is pretty simple. We're just gonna take these bus bars off. When you buy a battery cells, they're gonna come with bus bars but they're not gonna come with enough. So that's why I have these homemade bus bars. But it'll come with enough to make it series. It's just not enough to make it parallel. So I'm just gonna loosen those up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is a bus bar that I made. And this is a bus bar that they come with. Uh, mine are ugly, but they're actually better because they're pure copper and they're considerably thicker. Uh, and they're not hard to make. In fact, some people make them out of um, copper pipe. So uh, you can make your own bus bars pretty easily. So I'm just going to take all of these off. Now when I put this together in series to make my battery, I'm only going to use these. So I'm going to put those in different piles. So making a battery is pretty simple, but I thought I would just do it one more time. I'm gonna show you how to put them in series. I'm gonna show you how to put in the um, BMS. That's what controls the battery. And then I'll show you how to wire it all up and explain each step as we go along, in case you're finding this for the first time and you want to make yourself a battery. Now we're making a 24 volt battery because there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is what's called an 8S battery. And that makes a 24 volt nominal battery. If we were to split this in half, we could actually make a 12 volt battery. That would be a 4S battery. And if we wanted to have fun, we could actually make it a 2P 4S 12 volt battery. If we just put these in parallel and then put them in series. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but um, let's not overcomplicate this. Let's keep it simple. So now I'm just going to rotate every other one. And so now I have negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And then I'm going to put the bus bars back on, but a little bit differently this time. I'm going to attach the, the positive with the negative. So positive with negative, 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 and then the final positive with negative. So now we have everything in series. So once we tighten these down, this will be the new negative and this will be the new positive. So when you hook up there to there, you'll actually have a 24 volt nominal battery. And to control it, you use this, which this is a BMS and all these leads are what I'm gonna hook up next. This black one goes to the first negative. So this black one will go here then all the white ones go on each positive, starting with the same positive that the first that the black wire goes on, and ending with this red wire going to the positive over there. And I'll show you how to wire it all up. And then we'll take the B, these two wires, these will also go on the negative. And then that's really it. So I'll show you how to wire this all up. So there's a lot of different ways to make these batteries out of these cells. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm gonna talk about other methods. Uh, everybody swears that their way is the best. 
Um, is there a best way? I don't know. I'm sure there'll be people leaving comments telling me how their way is better. So be it. Um, I welcome that. Um, I make batteries all sorts of different ways. I've tried different techniques. Um, this is kind of the way I like doing it now. But there's a lot of different ways to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap them with Captain Tape. Just to kind of make it one solid unit. A lot of people talk about compression. What compression is, is you mechanically tie the batteries together. I'll show you in a second as soon as I get this going. All right. And again, this, this is not compression. This is just me making these one unit. But with compression, what you do is you, you get some sort of mechanical device and you push them together. Because as these fill up with energy, they actually get slightly physically larger. So the, the idea behind that is to keep them compressed. Uh, it makes them last longer. EVE, the, they make uh, very popular cells. They actually recommend it. In fact, I think most battery cell manufacturers recommend it. I've done it a few times. I personally never really noticed a difference. But the, the theory behind it is that they'll last longer if they're compressed. So feel free, feel free to play around with that. I am not compressing them. Another thing is people put some sort of membrane in between the cells. If you want the cells touching. Um, that's really, really important if you're going to be building something that's mobile, something that's in a, a vehicle, an RV. Because if these cells move around, because, you know, I've got them connected as one unit, but there's, you can see they still move around. So if these are flopping around in a car or an RV and they're moving and they're rubbing on each other, uh, you could eventually wear this blue away and they could touch and short out. So that's the idea between putting a membrane between them. I'm not going to put a membrane between mine because mine are not going to be moving much. But those are a couple different things, a couple different ways of that people um, build batteries. Another thing is when they put on the um, the BMS, they'll put that membrane or something between the BMS and the cell. The thinking there is that you don't want to transfer any kind of thermal energy from the battery BMS BMS to battery. Again, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be gluing mine on. I've been doing this lately, and uh, I don't see anybody else doing this. And, uh, you know, this might not be the best thing to do. Uh, you can tape it. Um, I've tried double-sided tape before. I've tried all sorts of things. This, um, this method here, where I just kind of um, use construction adhesive, it's been kind of working for me. So um, give that a shot. Or if somebody's out there has done that and it's been a disaster, um, let me know. I'd love to hear your input. So what you want to do, the one thing you got to do though is the B side of the wires has to go on the negative here. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to mount this so I know that it'll reach. I'm not going to attach these wires first because I'm actually going to put my wiring harness on first, but I want to make sure when I mount this that these will reach and they'll reach pretty good. So I'm going to mount it right there. Just clamp this thing on. Again, I've never seen anyone else do this, so it might be a dumb idea. I don't know, but um, it works for me. So then I just clamp it on. Make sure it's relatively straight. And then that'll set up in, uh, you know, 24 hours or so. And then we'll continue building the battery. So it's the next day. I've taken the clamp off of my BMS, it's um, glued in there. It's not totally set up, but should be good enough for what we're gonna do. And now I'm just gonna show you how to wire up this battery. It's pretty straightforward. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape down these, the um, Bluetooth mod and the sensors. Get them out of the way. So these are the sensors, you got a high and low temperature sensor. And those are critical because you don't want your battery getting too hot. And more importantly, you don't want it getting too cold because lithium iron phosphate chemistry cannot be charged when freezing. So you wanna have a sensor that will turn off any solar or actually any input um, when it's freezing out. And that's what these sensors do. And of course, if it gets too hot, 
it'll shut it down as well. That's not as big of a deal. It's probably more of a big deal if you're um, in an rv -er. Like for me, it's never going to happen because I'm never going to have this somewhere really hot. But if you're an rv -er and you're in a car or you're in somewhere where it's going to get really hot, you want to make sure it shuts off before it um, gets too hot. Also, then I'm going to tape this. This is the um, Bluetooth mod. I'm just going to tape this right here so it's out of the way. So now we're going to take our wires, this big old mess of wires. I don't know it looks like a big mess, but it's actually pretty straightforward to wire up. So we're going to take our black one, and there's only one black wire. And that black wire is going to go on your first terminal here. You want to unplug this first. That's a critical, cr critical, crucial step. Unplug your um, hiring wire. Unplug your wiring harness. There's several reasons, but the reason, one of the big reasons, is uh, we're going to use this to test to make sure our wires are right. Because if you hook these wires up incorrectly, you can actually harm this. So make sure this is unplugged. So there's that one. I'm going to grab the next wire. There's the next wire, and we're just going to go to the next positive. So you kind of pick up on the theme here. We're going to take the white wires, and they're just going to go on each positive terminal. So then the next wire, you guessed it, goes right there. So you can see this is not a difficult thing to do. Once you've done it once, you do it a million times. It's very easy to do. You just gotta go kind of slow. That next one goes to the next one. So we're about halfway done now. I wanna show you something else. These wires, these wires are gonna not come with this end on them so you're gonna have to put this uh connector on it this is a quarter inch connector you can get these anywhere i get these from amazon but you're going to want to cut this wire splice it and then put this on and crimp it very easy process i have a video on it if you don't know how to do it but it's very very simple so the next one goes in on our next one and we're going to put a little Nut on that. So this is not really that exciting to watch. So feel free to fast forward. It just gets kind of boring because all we're doing is putting them on each one. So then the next one goes on here. We're almost done. Hang in there. Another one, and then the final one, the red one, and not all BMS wiring harnesses are like this. These are JBD harnesses. If you get a dally, they're all going to be red. I like the JBD BMSs for several reasons, and this is just another one of them. It just makes it easier. So you take your last one, which is the red one, and that goes on over here, which is your last positive, which is going to be your main battery positive. All right, so now we're going to test these wires before we hook up the um, wiring harness. To do that is very simple. Um, it's a little bit weird to film, so what I've done is I've taped it so it doesn't move. I'm going to take my black probe from my voltmeter and put it on the first one here, which is the black. I'm going to take my red, and I'm just going to go through each one. Each one should go up by basically three, three and a half. So... And block as I'm trying to film it and not block it. So there's 3.5, there's 7, there's 10. This one's blank. Go to the next one, we got 14, 17, so we get 21, 
25 and 28. So our wiring harness is perfectly fine. So now I can go ahead and tighten everything down and finish hooking up the BMS. So now the final step is we hook up the harness and then we're going to hook up the BMS. So it just goes in like that. Easier said than done. Helps if you put it in the right way. And then we're going to take these two wires, which are the B side. Remember, we didn't tighten these down. This is why. We're going to take these off, this off. We're going to put these wires on, put on first. We put the big wires on first, and then the little wires. We'll tighten this back down. At this point, we can tighten all of the wires down except that first red because I'm going to hook up a wire on that to go out from the battery, but we'll get to that in a second. But we can tighten down all the other bad, all the other, but we can tighten down all the other nuts. And we got all these wires here, so um, we're going to organize these and kind of uh, twist them all together so they. Um, they're a little bit neater. Some people cut them. You can do that where you cut them and make them neat. I don't cut them because I find that I rebuild my batteries a lot. So I just, I don't cut them. But now I'm going to tighten everything down. And then we'll test to make sure that we have a battery. And when you're doing the final torque on these nuts, make sure you follow the recommendation of the um, manufacturer. You don't want to torque them too much or too little. Most people actually over torque. So now we'll do one final test to make sure that our battery is good. You remember it has Bluetooth, so you can actually could use the um, smartphone Bluetooth mod too. But um, I'm going to put my negative terminal on this, which is my new negative end of the battery. And of course the positive on the new positive. And you can see we have 28.7. So we have a fully charged, completely built lithium iron phosphate 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. This BMS can do 100 amps out. So from here I would suggest that you put this in some sort of box. You can build a box. You can put it in some sort of one of those big mobile portable toolboxes uh, you could put it in a tote you can do whatever you want but I would put it in some sort of box I'm going to be building a solar generator and this is going to be the battery of that so this I don't need to do anything else because I'm going to be putting it in a, a bigger box and I'm going to be building but that's it you've built yourself a battery I would clean up these wires a little bit however you want to clean them up a zip tie or something but that's it see how easy it is to build a 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery out of 3.2 volt prismatic cells. If, you've ever, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you've built one of these and you have suggestions, I'd love to hear your input. As always, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you on part two when I build my solar generator. Thanks for watching.